Welcome back to our digital fashion modeling series. Last time, we explored the power of IDM VTON outside of Comfy UI. We also learned how to refine our processed images using a simple workflow. Today, we're taking it to the next level. We're going to build a seamless workflow that lets you change any piece of clothing for your digital model, all within Comfy UI. This means you'll be able to swap out input images and get stunning results with ease. So, Let's dive right in and create this workflow together. Before we go into the workflow, a quick note on system requirements. To run IDM v Ton node on Comfy UI, you'll need a graphics card with at least 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I was able to make it work on an RTX 3060 with 12 gigabytes, but it took around 15 minutes to generate a single image, not exactly lightning fast. But don't worry, I'm sure the developers are working on optimizing the node for better performance. If you're working with a lower end GPU, you might want to consider running Comfy UI on a cloud-based GPU like RunPod. I've actually got a video on how to do just that. As for me, I'm using an RTX 3090 with 24 gigabytes of VRAM and I'm happy to report that the workflow runs smoothly and quickly. Now, let's get started by loading two essential images. First, we need an image of our digital model wearing a similar type of clothing that we want to try on them. For example, if we want to try a dress shirt on our model, find or generate an image of them wearing a similar garment. To make things easier, I've prepared a folder with various generated models wearing different types of clothing. You can find the link in the description. Make sure to resize the model image to 1024 height and 768 width, which is the optimal dimension for IDM v Tan. Next, let's add our first node grounding Dino from the Segment Anything pack. This node uses semantic strings to segment any element in an image. After loading the SAM model and grounding Dino model, which will automatically download after your first generation, we'll be able to create a mask of the specific piece of clothing on the image by simply writing it in the prompt. Now let's add the Dense Pose Estimator node from Comfy UI's ControlNet Auxiliary preprocessors. Connect this node to the model image and you should be able to generate a Dense Pose image. Next, we'll add the IDM VTON inference node to our workflow. Let's set up the pipeline by choosing the weight type. On this GPU, we can use Float 16 or Float 32, but for lower VRAM GPUs, BF Float 16 is a good option. Now let's connect the images. The model image goes to the human underscore IMG input, the dense pose image to pose underscore IMG the converted mask image to mask underscore IMG, and our garment image, the piece of clothing, to garment underscore IMG. In the text box, let's describe our garment in simple terms, like a model is wearing a dress shirt. You can use the provided generic negative prompts. Unless you want to experiment with random or fixed seeds, you don't need to change the settings below. Now we're ready to generate the image. Note that the first generation will download some models, so make sure you have about 25 gigabytes of free hard drive space. Let's see the result. As you can see, IDM VTON is working its magic, and the result is impressive. The key to this success is the input image we provided, which featured a woman wearing a dress shirt, making it easier for IDM VTON to work its magic. Now let's take the result to the next level by building the refiner workflow just like we did in the last video. To avoid an error with IDM VTON node output image, I'll use an image sender node, which will act as a bridge between the IDM VTON inference output and the next node. Let's give it a unique ID. Next, I'll load the DreamShaper XL Turbo Checkpoint model, which will refine our image. For the negative and positive prompts, We'll keep it simple and focus on what the person is wearing. Now, let's add the K-Sampler node. 
To connect the IDM VTON output image with the K sampler, we'll use an image receiver node from the impact pack nodes. We'll give it the same ID as the image sender, and this will solve our connectivity issue. Okay, now let's generate the image with a denoise strength of 0.5 to see how our dress shirt turns out. Ah, uh, you can see that the result looks more natural, like the garment is actually being worn, not just photoshopped. However, we notice that the model itself has changed, and we want to improve only the garment, not the model. To achieve that, we'll use the IP Adapter Plus model. We'll load the IP Adapter Unified Loader and the IP Adapter Processor and connect it to our checkpoint model and K sampler. For the image, we'll use the piece of clothing we want the model to wear. We'll also need an attention mask, so we'll use the one we generated with grounding dyno, but we'll need to grow it a bit and add a Gaussian blur to the edges. Now let's use the Image Composite Masked node to combine the IDM VTON image at the bottom and the refined image on top, using our blurred mask to fuse them seamlessly. And that's our final result. To visualize the improvement, we can use the Image Comparer node to compare the refined image with the original raw image. Let's try another example, but this time with a twist. We'll change not one, but two pieces of clothing, and we might encounter an issue where grounding Dino struggles to detect an object in the image. What do we do in this case? We disable the nodes and create a manual mask. Once done, we connect the mask with the Convert Mask to Image node. Now we generate the image and see the result. Next, we'll connect our manual mask with the IP adapter and run the refining workflow. After generating the refined Sport Bray image, we can copy and replace our input image with the last generated one. This time, we'll load a leggings image as our garment, and reactivate grounding Dino, which should have an easy time detecting genes. After updating the garment description, we can generate the image. The leggings look great, but they need a bit more refining. Don't forget to connect the mask from Grounding Dino with the IP adapter and update the positive prompt. And that's it. We've successfully changed both the top and bottoms of our digital model. While this workflow won't give you 100% identical clothing from the original, I'm thrilled to see how far we've come in just a few months. The rapid progress in generative AI and the open source community is truly exciting. If you want to download this workflow, you can find it in the description box, along with all the images and resources used in my latest videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to stay updated with the latest video tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.